Hey crafty cuties, welcome back to Paper Terrace. Today we're gonna turn one of these into one of these. Okay, so I don't really have plans for this video or this journal, but I wanted to start out by saying that you can really use any kind of box that you have as long as it has three sides that are intact and even this one has like some little um, bins in the cardboard and that's fine. Um, I'm thinking I'll use this one with the window because I think that could be really cool. Um, but yeah, the size doesn't exactly matter. It just depends on what size you want your journal to be. This one has like a little bit less. So essentially this side is going to go ahead and be the spine of our journal. So I think we'll be adventurous and try something new. Let's go ahead with this one. As you can see, I'm going to only cut along the outer side here because I don't need this part. but when you are cutting this part off, try to cut as straight as you can. Don't worry, we can clean up the edges, but if you wanna keep most of the cover for the size that you want, then just try to cut as straight as possible. So I like to start out by cutting that piece off. So this you know, will be the spine here. You can pull this apart, whatever is easiest for you. So now I like to clean up the edges just a little bit and I'll usually use my trimmer for that. For this one, I wanna keep it as close to the original size of this box as I can. I'm gonna just trim up the edges here so they'll be a little bit straighter. But once we get the fabric and everything on, it's not really gonna be too noticeable if things are off a bit. I grabbed what I think I wanna use. I did go through my scraps and kind of picked out the ones that I wanted. A lot of these scraps are from the Amazon fabric that I recently got in one of my hauls. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link it below. I also got like this doily um, and they're just gorgeous florals. And so it, if you don't have a lot of scraps, honestly, that pack on Amazon, it was $10.99 and you got a ton of fabric, but not like too big of pieces. Anyways, I personally like to, when I'm doing a patchwork journal, I like to put the fabric straight onto paper and then apply it to the cover. You can absolutely just take your pieces and put it straight down to the cover. It's just all about preference and I really wanna show you how I genuinely do it. And then also I feel like that adds a little bit more durability to the cover and that will kind of smooth out and hide some of the little dings that we have in our cover. And I need a paper that's big enough to fit all the way on the journal. So I'm actually just taking two pieces of letter size copy paper. And I specifically like to use the copy paper because it's lightweight, it's not gonna add too much bulk. It's enough to where it's also gonna like give some more durability. So now I'm gonna trim it down. Like one piece is almost enough, but I want it to wrap around the sides as well. So now I'm gonna trim this up. And since I have a seam here, I'm also going to make sure this is in the middle of the spine here. Just, it's just a personal preference. It probably doesn't really do anything, but I'm just gonna kind of trim. I'm not measuring, but I am leaving about mm, an inch or so. And it doesn't have to be super straight because it's gonna just be wrapped around here. I'm gonna take a pencil now. And what I want to do is mark where the actual journal is so that when I start doing, um, adding the fabric, I can make sure that even if I add fabric that goes outside the lines, cause I do want it to be wrapped around, but it'll just give me a better idea of the focal area that I'm going to be working with, if, if that makes sense. I think I'm going to carefully <laughs> rip this off. It's gonna make it just a little bit easier to work with. We'll place it back on. I'm just gonna go ahead and place, cause I don't know what I'm gonna do with this little window yet, but I wanna know where it is when I'm doing my patchwork. Now we're just gonna take our pieces and start applying them down. Now I'm gonna use my sewing machine, but to start out, I'm just gonna be placing them down. And last time I really loved using just a little bit of double-sided tape. So I actually need to draw the window on this side because because this needs to be, this whole image needs to be mirrored 
if you know what I mean, because this is actually gonna be where the front cover is. I hope that makes sense. So I kind of erased the one on this side. There we go. That's gonna make more sense. Okay. And then that's okay that we have tape over here. We'll, we'll need it anyways. Okay. Now we can get going. Okay, so this is gonna be where the front of the journal is. And I can keep in mind that where this middle spine area is, is where the middle of the actual spine is on the journal. For this part, I don't really have any rhyme or reason. I just kind of play with things until I get to a point where I'm happy with it. Um, yeah really just a lot of kind of playing around. I'm loving this, but I don't know if it exactly goes. Maybe it does. Go, goes. Okay. Nah, I feel like it's so pretty, but I don't think it really goes with this. You guys can let me know if, if I made the right decision. Sort of feeling like I should cut this into squares. You could even do different, I wanna try to tear this, because I don't want this to look perfect, but you could even do other shapes, like if you notice this, this one, I was gonna cut a few of these into like an octagon shape because I don't know where I got that idea, but. And I think I'm just gonna cut out this window here and hopefully it will match up perfectly with our actual cover. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna kind of slide this off now and then I will start to, it, I don't need it to be perfect. If you really love how yours was set up, then go ahead and take a picture of it so that you can place everything right back on. I added just a little bit more double-sided tape and again that's just to kind of hold it in place because I will be sewing the pieces on but I'm gonna go ahead now and start adding them on remembering to go over the lines just a little bit. The angle for this might not be too great but I do want to quickly mention that I really like to have a sewn border around the entire thing and since our paper is a bit too big if I did it right around the edge we won't see that because it would be be folded around the edges so I'm gonna go ahead and take this again and just trace it on the opposite side because I'll be able to see that line. So now I can see where the edge is and I'm gonna start by sewing one big line all the way around the entire thing. So now I'm just gonna do a series of very random sewing and I like to go around almost every piece of fabric. Oh. Now is a good time to decide if you wanna add any buttons or any kind of like hardware. A lot of times I like to add um, the name plates like right here. But for this one, since we have that little window, I definitely wanna keep it minimal. So I'm just gonna place the buttons kind of in a random spot here, I think. And I will sew these on by hand really quick. So let's go ahead and get this baby down on our box now. Okay, yes, I think it makes sense to go ahead and place one of the transparencies on this side. Since I don't know what I'm doing yet, this will allow me to, you know, sandwich something in. And then if I decide not to, that's fine too. I'll just have the transparency there. So believe it or not, I actually prefer double-sided tape on transparencies or this is just like some left, it's not, it's a leftover like plastic packaging basically. I like double-sided tape, plastic down here. Make sure it's clean. Okay, I think, yeah. I mean, I, at least I think that makes sense to put that down now. I'm going to start with the spine here. And I'm just using my Tombow Mono Aqua. I like to spread this out a little bit when I am applying it to like printer paper, even though. Don't worry if you have like any kind of bubbles or if your fabric kind of like bunched up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna make sure to line up the window because that's the most important thing we can do that and then i'm gonna press down i'm gonna flip this over real quick just to kind of make sure that we had the middle seam here kind of lining up with the middle here i'll start with the easier side since we don't have to worry about the window and again i'm gonna add glue so i'm just gonna spread this all around and place this down okay now i have glue <clears throat> all over the front 
and I try really hard to, to make sure there's not too much around the window so it doesn't seep onto the plastic, but no biggie if it does. Basically what I did when I was cutting off the corners is I don't measure anything, but I just try to leave like an eighth of an eighth of an inch between the edge of the paper and the corner of your book. Now, if you don't get it perfectly right, we can fix it as we go along. Okay, so some of these fabric ends are not going to be attached to the paper, so I'm just gonna glue them around if I need to. And then basically I'm just adding some glue. I like to do the two sides first. I wanna make sure that this, okay, so I might have to trim this one so it doesn't overlap the window, but that's fine. Okay, everything's wrapped around nice. This is my favorite part, the reveal. It's so pretty. So trim anything that you want after you flip it over. You know what might look really cool if we took some of the scraps we have left over to make this real scrappy and sort of apply them all the way across to like that. Let's just use a little bit of glue just to hold everything down. So I'm just going to continue gluing it down like that and then we'll just do like one single stitch across all the way across. I got out my pressed flowers, uh, leaves and things that I have. Here is the scrappy trim that we have. I don't know why I have not really ever thought to do this, but we are going to place this on the back here, like that, we'll just glue that down. So I'm just gonna trim down some scrapbook paper to line the inside, and I'm cutting it just a little bit smaller than my box. Okay, so I trimmed those out, and. I did my best, it's not perfect, so that's okay. We'll just work with that. And I'm gonna go ahead and ink up all of the edges here. And especially like the inside here since, just to make this part look a little better. And if you didn't want this to be completely see-through, you know you could add your uh, pressed flor florals or you could do kind of like a shaker with some sequins and then you could, completely cover this and you would still have a window, just wouldn't be completely see-through. And then just place that down. Just take a tiny bit of glue right along the spine of, and then we have our other piece of plastic that we'll sandwich. And I'm just gonna take double-sided tape now and go around the edges again. It's, it's really hard to see where I'm actually putting it, but there we go. I'm just gonna add glue all the way around like the edges. I'm not too worried about um, spreading this glue out on these papers because this scrapbook paper is not like too thin or anything. Then I'll just glue the other two. Ooh. Okay, that looks really cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna finally go ahead and fold these. Everything's pretty dry, but you may wanna wait till Everything's very dry. This is just looking so cute. I'm gonna go ahead and find the center, or center enough, and poke a hole first. And then I'm going to use one of these big charm rings, and yes, I will try to place the link below. I know a lot of people ask me about these all the time. These are not the Tim Holtz ones. These are generic version. I love the Tim Holtz. It's good hardware, but I, I really like these bigger ones. Okay, and then you just fold up the prongs. We're gonna use some handmade coffee dyed paper, ledger paper, and I think I might use it as maybe an inspiration journal or a memory keeping journal. And I really do like to have a pretty blank base. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, so I'm just gonna pull out some blank pages. So again, since I'm making this one for me, I make it a little bit different than if I were making it for someone else. I'm gonna keep the pages all blank to start with. I'm trying to do pretty basic pages, just some pages also that I had set aside because I knew like I loved and wanted to use for my next journal that I made myself. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim everything down to size off camera. I've done that a lot of times and if you're new, um, I have that on a lot of my videos, but I wanna get the most important parts into this video. So I'll trim everything down and we're gonna come back and we will go ahead and bind 
the journal. Okay, so I cut everything down to size. It ended up being nine inches by just a little under seven inches. I don't know how many pages I cut. I just honestly kept cutting until I felt like I had enough. And I want a lot of space in here. So typically if you're new to my channel, I would be decorating these. If I was making it for someone else, I would put lots of pockets in it and lots of decorations. But the way that I like to do memory keeping, which is how I use my journals, is really have a pretty blank slate. I don't mind if it like has somewhat of a background, but not too much going on. Okay, keeping all of these scraps, I promise we'll do a video where we use paper scraps and junk mail, hopefully soon. Okay, we're gonna make the signatures. I have 18 total pages. So I think I'll actually do four signatures because I don't like there to be more than like more, no more than about four pages in each signature. Otherwise things can bulk up really fast. So I placed these in piles. I have all of my just more blank coffee dyed pages or dyed pages here. I have anything that's kind of a book page, a music paper, has kind of a lot going on. These are bags envelope kind of pile and then the ledger papers over here. I'm going to go ahead and just start with one and I'll do about four or five pages and I'm just going to kind of go through. No really rhyme or reason. If I'm using a bag I sort of like that to be in between two pages rather than the middle. So there's one and I just kind of mix it up. And I really honestly do this probably different every single time. So we have five signatures. We're gonna go ahead and bind them in. So you're gonna need a piece of cardstock that's just a tiny bit um, smaller on the width than the spine of your journal. Then you're going to need some type of fabric and I highly recommend something that's not stretchy. So maybe like cotton or like muslin even works, but make sure it's not too stretchy and you want this to be the same height as your journal but i need to turn mine down a bit but you want it to be about an inch bigger on each side so i'll go ahead and trim my height here and then you will need an awl or something that's a little pokey tool You'll need your sewing needles and you'll need some binding floss or or embroidery floss, yarn, whatever kind of string you want to use. We'll glue the paper to our fabric. Now we can glue it to the top. I don't think it actually kind of matters. Then you'll want to maybe take a ruler. This will just help us sew everything in a little bit straighter. Now I have decided to go ahead and actually pull one of these signatures out. I really would like a lot of space in my journal, so I'm going to have four signatures. I also went ahead and glued on a little pocket. It's actually the next day that I'm filming this part, and I embossed this to make it nice and pretty, but this will kind of show through that little window. Okay, so I have four signatures. If you have just count the amount that you have and then you'll want that number of lines on your paper portion here and i'm actually not going to measure anything it's not going to matter too much you just want to make sure it's going to be within the size of your spine so i'm just gonna eyeball it though but you and it's already not straight but that's fine um definitely measure it if you would like yours to be straighter so that's the line that we are going to sew each signature onto and take your paper clips and hold all of the pages together by putting one at the top and one at the bottom on each side this is just going to help us hold everything nice and tight then i'm going to take this I'm going to fold it in the middle here just so I can find the center and I'm actually just going to draw kind of lightly with my pencil across here. Everywhere that a line crosses that's going to be where we are binding the holes. So I'm actually just going to take this and again I'm folding because it's going to help me get a straighter line and I'm just going to fold this down about an inch. Then I'm going to draw a line where that fold mark is all the way across just so I can visually see that a little bit better. And then I'm going to take one of my signatures and I'm just going to place it as straight as I can. This part will matter right next to 
the very last line that's here and I'm going to take my pencil to mark a little dot where I'm going to be binding the holes and I want it to match up exactly where I have all of the intersections happening so let me show you so you see we have a whole uh, holes gonna go right there there and there do not mix up I'm gonna even write a little T at the top and I'm gonna just basically do that for all of these I'm just going to line it up to the next line. They should all be in the same spot, but we're human and and that that perfectness doesn't always happen. So I'm just going to mark this one's a little darker paper, but I can still see where that is and we're going to actually punch holes into all of those spaces. So since I have my paper clips holding this all together, I'm just going to open it up and I'm gonna do it from the outside just because, again, I can see where I marked those spots, okay? So again, I'm gonna open this up, punch holes where I have all of those markings. So we're doing three holes per signature. And I'm just gonna copy this for the next two. Let's try that again. Okay, so you're going to start sewing in the center hole you're lining up and staying in your lane. You're on the very last row and you're going to sew right into the middle hole of our fabric piece. And it's a little awkward because this thing's going to move a little bit, but it gets better as we're sewing. You pull your string through, but keep a little tail. Make sure not to pull it all the way through. Go up to the top hole in the same lane. Make sure you're in your lane. Go back, sew through the signature. Make sure to pull pretty tight, but not too tight. We can tighten things up in a bit. You're going to go down to the bottom hole. You're going to sew out the bottom hole of the back here. Again, kind of pull tight. Then we're going to go into the center. Everything should be lined up pretty good to where you're going to just come straight out. But don't be alarmed if for some reason you're, you're sewing into that center hole from the back and it's not exactly lining up. Just take a minute, look, kind of peek on the side here, line everything up. You will get it. It can take a few minutes, even for me. I'm sure, I mean, I've already had so many, you know, issues while I've been filming. It's just, you work through them. It's, it's worth it. Go ahead and pull everything nice and tight. You want to have one tail on the right hand side of our center piece and one on the left hand. That way you can go ahead and tie a knot right around that center. And that's going to make sure that these do not get pulled back out. Do a double knot and you can trim and move on to the next one kind of fold that over keep it to the side so we're gonna do that same thing I'm gonna thread my needle and we'll sew this one into the second lane we'll do one more together so starting in the center hole sewing out we're gonna go to the top we're gonna sew out the top through our signature flip it around. Sorry guys. It's a little hard to stay in frame sometimes when I'm needing to move this all, all the way around. Go down to the bottom hole. You're going to sew out to the bottom hole of this right here. And then you're going to go back into the center hole. And I, I know you can't really see that. I hope you get what I'm saying. And then we're going to make sure we have one tail on one side one on the other give it a little tug make sure it's nice and tight and give it a nice knot and then trim the sides and I'm gonna sew the next two in off camera so we can hurry and I can show you how to get this puppy into your book okay so once we have all of our signatures sewn in you are going to have this nice lovely half journal going on kind of like a text block I guess you could say now I'm gonna leave all of the paper clips on for now just to make this next part a little bit easier now it's time to go ahead and glue this into our journal cover this is already decorated and everything like you know you guys already had seen and so all we need to do is get this glued down if you can see I'm holding down those flaps and I'm just gonna start adding quite a bit glue all the way up and down here I also grab my double-sided tape 
because I will be placing some double-sided tape down on this part as well, just for extra grab. We really want to make sure that whatever glue you're using is something you really, really trust. Again, I absolutely trust this glue with my life. I'm gonna set this very carefully down to the side real quick. I kind of want that to get a little tacky, not too much, but just a little tacky. So while that's working, I'm gonna go ahead and take my double-sided tape up and down the inside here. Okay, now's the time, guys. We're gonna go ahead and I'm going to hold these flaps kind of out of the way. So you're gonna need both hands here, making sure to line up the top pages to the top here and the bottom to the bottom. And if your pages were a little bit, you know, shorter than the book, then just kind of um, center them. Now, before we press down, make sure to shut these and just make sure that everything fits within. Okay, that's good. So now's a good time to grab a bone folder. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and in between all of the signatures, we're gonna take our bone folder and just press down. We'll just start there. Give it a nice press. We can go ahead and glue down the fabric flaps. I know everything's kind of blending in here on camera because we have all of this floral happening, but now I'm just gonna add glue all the way across here. Now is a good time to go ahead and really make sure you got everything down as tight as it can. Close your book, either tie it up if you can, or place it in between something to where it's not gonna open up. Let this dry for a couple hours. Okay, we're back. Everything should be pretty dry in here now. I'm just gonna open it up and just make sure. So I'm gonna go ahead now. We can remove the paper clips and I mean, our journal is done. So I don't even want to know how long this video was right now as I'm filming, I have no idea. Let me know how did you like it. Be honest with me. I really love how this one turned out. I'm glad I decided to keep this one for myself. If you can see the little window, you you can't exactly even see what's, what's going on in that first page, but I lined it up so that there would just be some like greenery in the back, some of the lavender. And then we have a little pocket here, but remember, I'm not gonna decorate this journal too much. I probably won't even be in this one for a little while, but I am so excited for whenever I will get to start using it. And remember, I have one that's similar, similar to this that will be in my um, journal release. I know that you guys can make one too. So I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.